and it is beyond freezing. It is super early morning. The sun hasn't even woken up yet. But I'm going to go through the basics of this aquaponics system. It is a smaller system to grow seedlings. We've got about 800 lettuce planted in this, which I only did last night. So in another week or two, we'll have baby lettuces starting to poke their little heads out. But yes, I'm going to go through how I've set this up, what products I'm using and what to do to maintain it. Super, super easy and heaps of fun. And welcome back to another video that is me growing stuff in pots. There's the stuff. And there is like 75 goldfish in there and 75 goldfish in there. I know, I have a lot of goldfish. They are growing up. These tubs here are about 800 litres each. I've just got a simple little connection going through there. So the water from this one is pumping into there. This is our system. So it is the cheap eBay system that you've seen in a couple of my older videos. If you haven't seen those, there'll be a link at the end of this video to what this one is. But it's about a $120 Australian system. That is half the system. So you actually get double that. I've only used half of it on this. It is usually white, we've just painted it black, apart from these two little bits here, just for the fun of it, because we're not OCD. <laughs> but there are seeds in the bottom there. These systems are a little bit too small to grow bigger plants in them, so they're mainly used just to germinate seeds in aquaponics, and then you can move the cups into bigger systems. And by too small, the piping is not the right diameter. So when the plants produce their roots, and start growing, they're actually going to clog the pipe and then you're going to get water overflowing. But the way that this system works is it comes with like a one watt pump. I am going to rig it to a solar pump, I just haven't done that yet. But the little pump down the bottom there, pumping up that white tubing, goes into this nozzle here, goes all the way down that, which is about six foot of piping, all the way down there, all the way down there, and then it just comes out a little pipe there which is also black that you kind of can't see so the water flow is just gently going through you can have that on a timer so you can have it turn on for like half an hour every hour or two just to pump the water and the nutrients through and then it turns off so it doesn't have to be on 24 hours a day what does need to be on 24 hours a day is your filtration and this filter here is a biological filter it is I think a 4500 pond mate compact bio something rather the way that that is working is that is growing nitrifying bacteria and the bacteria in there is eating the waste from the fish and turning it into plant food so the plants will feed off the chemical waste which is your nitrates but they also take up trace elements and minerals out of the water which is also what the fish do so closed systems like this are a little bit awkward because to get the balance right the plants are not just feeding off the waste from the fish, they're actually feeding off trace elements and minerals in the water. And as that gets depleted and the plants and the fish suck the nutrients out of the water like the trace elements and minerals, your pH will start to drop. And if it drops too low, that's going to kill your fish off, going to kill your nitrifying bacteria off, and it's going to screw your plants up, obviously. So you need a little pH test kit. I'm just using one like this, which just matches the color on the chart, a little vial of water. We want it about 7.2 or so, so just above neutral for these fish. The products I'm using are the Fritz stuff, because apparently you can use this with aquaponics and still eat the fish, not that we're eating goldfish, and still eat the plants, which we're eating the plants. So that is a dechlorinator that chemically breaks down the chlorine and chloramine. Where we are, our tap water has not just got chlorine in it, it's bonded to ammonia. It lasts about nine months, so you want to chemically break it down. A lot of people will say, leave it overnight in the sun, put an air stone in it, it'll get rid of the chlorine. Not where we are, unfortunately. The filter does have a UV sterilizer in it, and UVC will break down chlorine, but it's easier to dechlorinate it before it goes in the system. So I've just got a drum like that, fill that up with water, dechlorinate it, balance the pH, and then just take some water out and put some water back in. So it's very, very easy. To alter the pH, I've just got a alkaline and acid buffer. So just an acid and alkaline. Well, actually, that's not the buffer. That is the buffer there. That can maintain the hardness to drag it around about seven. So mixing a little bit of that with that stuff in the drum gets your pH fine. Yes, that is pretty much the basics of it. Not many water changes because we want the nitrates to build up 
and you do water changes in systems like this for that but we also need to check the GH which is the mineral content and that's a different test kit than your pH test kit but your mineral content is what is going to keep everything happy because as I said if it drops too low that is the end of everything things will start dying you'll get issues with plants looking great then going yellow but yeah everything sucks the mineral content out of the water there are a lot of goldfish in there it is freezing by the way oh look my sun is almost coming up we're at 15.3 degrees celsius which is 59.5 fahrenheit that is cold we live in the subtropics so it should be a lot warmer than that as soon as the sun hits it's going to jump up a fair bit but that is where we are so this will get a lot of morning light as i said in the subtropics in full sun and summer it melts things we have like very very hot days so this is a good area for these types of systems that doesn't get too much sun what i'm going to do once these grow is i'm going to set up another bigger system on this system here and this has just got a big Australian native Murray cod in it and a few little cold water fish in there exactly the same idea this tub here is pumping the overflowing from your bio filter into there and there's a pump in there pumping the water up into that so biological filtration breaking down all the chemical waste at the moment there's only one big fish in there so we'll probably add a lot more fish into this system but these tubs are I think about 1200 litres maybe a little bit more than that because they are a fair bit bigger than these two tubs but that is the basics of how this system works super cool super easy you don't have to spray paint them black but they are cheap you could get away with just one tub but filtration is the main thing make sure that you've got decent amount of bacteria your water is balanced so you don't kill off your bacteria and your fish produce enough chemical waste to feed the plants so that is that system. We're going to jump to our other systems now just because they are older and a little bit more established and so you, show you the difference. It is beyond freezing right now. Wow, okay. So there's less sun on this side of the house. This is all my fruit trees and everything that you've probably seen in my other videos. If you haven't, go check them out. This system here is a hydroponic system. So different than aquaponics just means no fish. Uh, this is the same sort of cheap eBay system. There are lettuce in there. Let's wake a little lettuce up. There they are. I think these are about two weeks old or so. Exactly the same idea as the other system. Except obviously it's white. Do you think I should paint that? Reckon I should just paint it green or something? Comment in the comments here. You reckon I should paint that? Maybe fluorescent pink? I don't know. <laughs> but I definitely should. So this whole system is solar, not those panels there, but I've got some panels on the roof. These are the two tubs as I kick over something, whatever that is. So these tubs are a little bit smaller again. I think these are about 600 litre tubs and it's just a solar pump in there, pumping the water up into this. And it just keeps going all the way through those, down, all the way through those, down, all the way through those, and then back into that. So the solar pump obviously turns on in the daytime, off at night, so it is off at the moment because it's still freezing cold. The roots on that. We have some baby lettuce. So this is sort of semi-successful at the moment. We are experimenting with nutrients in there, how much nutrients we need to grow the lettuce. We're very new to this, but it's super, super easy. It's just making sure the plants have the right conditions. What is interesting though is all these lettuce that are more in the shade are growing better than the ones that get more sun. So I think we might be getting too much sun on this system. Not entirely sure. Not even going to show you the Beto boxes because, yeah, it's a bit of a mess at the moment. But that's the same sort of system, water pumping up, going through those back into there. We'll do that again in another video once everything is growing. But we're going to jump to the other side. It is so cold, Benji. Quick, quick. Quick, 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 quick. There's a lemon. Ooh. So the other side, this is a bigger aquaponics system. I keep saying every time I have it in a video, I need to connect another pool to this. Ideally get a couple of those big tubs, I think. Get rid of this old ratty thing here and have a couple of bigger tubs. So I might do that soon when I can be bothered, which I have no idea when that will be. 
But this is the same sort of system. It has a solar pump, well, a solar pump in there, solar panel up there, and the water pumps up into, where is it? Where's my pipe? There's my pipe. So the water pumps up into the top of that, goes down in there, down, and then back in, and also up here, along, down, and then back in there. So obviously this only works when the sun hits it again, but these are our strawberries, and our strawberries are going really, really well. So hopefully the roots won't clog these pipes. I don't think they will, because generally like, they don't produce too much roots compared to you know things like lettuce and that, which have got silly amounts of roots. But this is just your normal guttering with holes drilled in it. This system here is the same as what you just saw, just an eBay system. Look at the algae on that. Yeah, so there's nothing growing in that one because obviously we've done every second one because otherwise it's just going to clog it too much. And you can see how these ones have grown already. They're almost joining up where those ones over there, once these get to that size, they're probably going to clog the pipe, which is what we don't want. But as soon as we notice all our water draining out of our pond and our fish not happy, we'll deal with that. But that is the other system way too cold to show you anymore so we're going to end this video now <laughs> still going to sort of that sort of stuff but anyway if you did enjoy this video click the thumbs up so i know if you want to see more videos there'll be lots of videos on my channel and i will be doing more so we will see you in the next time we'll see you in the next videos <laughs> it's so cold